Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going over how to create one of the most powerful monsties in Monster Hunter Stories 2. This thing is an absolute beast, and we've turned it into a jack of all trades that can pretty much destroy anything that you need to in the game, and you can just use this for absolutely everything everything now i do hope everybody enjoys today's video if you do make sure to slap that like button and also let me know in the comments below what monsters you would like to see made incredibly powerful in monster hunter stories too we've changed up a lot of silver winds moves to do more damage and inflict more damage over time like this poison ability that does 543 damage all on its own and we can stack this with other damage that silver wind can do uh, upping the damage that you can potentially do each turn now what's great about these status ailments that you're adding onto the monster is it buffs your Nargakuga, but it also buffs yourself if you set up your character right. So not only are we going to be going over various increases for your monster, but we'll be setting up a full-blown build with your character as well. So the first thing we're going to go over today is the genes required for the Silverwind Nargakuga, which is the deviant version of Nargakuga that you can get in high rank. Uh, then we're going to go over all of the armor and weapons that we can use with this build to really optimize the amount of damage that we can do. And I really hope you all enjoy the video. Now, Nargakuga is a deceivingly powerful monster when you first look at the stats here you see that the hp is pretty good speed is really high but the crit rate is extremely high one of the highest crit rates you can get on a monster now also the elemental stats are pretty good we've got the the second well the third highest elemental attack on any creature but it also has the highest crit rate. So we're really going to combine that crit rate and high element, non-elemental attack to do some really, really high damage. Now you can get these in super rare dens or for super rare tickets. If you're looking to find them, you can find them in those super rare expeditions. Now, if we look at something like Bloodbath Diablos, we can see here that it's got a higher elemental attack and same goes for the Grim Claw Tigrex. Now you could use these for a similar build if you so desired, but where these lack is the critical rate and speed. We really want to have that maxed out crit rate now, Grimclaw Tigrex is a really good option for this. It does have lower crit rate, um, but Bloodbath Diablos does have a lot of HP as well, if that's the route you wanted to go with. But I really like Silverwind Nargakuga because its abilities are also very good for farming up your expeditions because it's able to use stealth as its riding action, which means you can avoid aggro when doing your expeditions and farm up things very quickly. Now let's get into the genes that we've chosen for our build. You can kind of change this up depending on what you want to go for, but we have done a lot of changes here. Now this whole core build is based around Salt in the Wound XL, which increases damage done to enemies with abnormal statuses by a good amount. When you have this with the two golden stars, which I only have level one right now, you can upgrade this two more times. That'll increase your damage by 20%. Now we are using a crit build, so when we look in our bingo list here, we have non-elemental bingo times 6, so we have an 140% increased damage. Now I could have gone with a different skill up here to complete our non-elemental bingo, but I really wanted that critical eye gene because we are wanting to get critical hits. So I sacrificed a potential of 10% non-elemental damage to get that increased critical chance. You don't have to, you can change that up if you so desire. But we've got some other skills on here that are really important non-elemental attack boost xl you're going to want to get this up to uh, the max level because we're a non-elemental build you can get these on various creatures you can get them on nergigante which you could farm up easily and any other non-elemental creature like the brute tigrex uh the regular tigrex grimclaw tigrex sand Barioth. there's a bunch of other monsters that have non-elemental boost i've been putting on so many creatures i kind of just ran out of genes to put on but it's a really easy skill to farm up now, we've got Arachnophobia on here. I really like this skill, but there's a couple others that we could put here if we wanted to. We're not going to go over that here in a second. But Arachnophobia deals medium non-elemental damage to one enemy and a low chance to inflict poison or paralysis or both 
for three turns. Now, when you have this up to the level two gold stars or level three, technically, you get power plus plus and rate plus plus, and you're pretty much going to apply that poison and paralysis every time you use it, which does a damage over time, but then it also prevents your opponent from attacking, which is really good. Now, since we are going for a status ailment build, I do have Inflict Ailment Gene XL on here, which significantly increases abnormal status inflict rate, which is just kind of, it's not necessary for this build, but it's definitely going to help out. We've also got Divine Blessing XL on here. You can swap this out for another non-elemental gene if you so desire, but this sometimes reduces the amount of damage taken, and since we have it up to, it activates very often, and this can drastically reduce the amount that you might have to heal your creature in a battle. So you could choose to use Health Up or All Elemental Defense Up. Those are all really good options here, but I chose Divine Blessing XL. You can really go with what you want. Now, next up, we've got the attacks that we've decided to put on here to really change things up. And I changed up a lot of stuff. We've got the Venom Strike gene on here, which I took from Rathalos. You can get these on high rank. Rathalos uh, deals heavy non-elemental damage to one enemy with a medium chance to inflict poison for three turns. There's a couple other skills that you can use, but when you get this up to level three, the power plus and rate plus is really good to apply that poison debuff because we want that poison on there for our salt in the wound. But we also have Hellbreaker on here which you can get Hellbreaker from a Bloodbath Diablos. I used all of my Bloodbath Diablos to put this Hellbreaker gene on here, but what it does is it deals heavy non-elemental damage to one enemy, but it also has a low chance to greatly lower defense for three turns. And with all of our inflict rates, it has a pretty high chance to actually apply that, which not only is that going to increase your damage, doubly so because you have a status ailment on there and then you have the increased damage you're doing because of the lower defense but it's going to increase your damage for everybody else in your party as well so i really like this skill it might not activate all of the time but we have a choice if we have already inflicted noxious poison here then we can go for the defense down and this is the other skill that we've decided to put on here which deals heavy non-elemental damage to one enemy and a high chance to inflict severe poison for three turns. Now this comes from Dread Queen Rathalos, this beast right here, who is beautiful. And I understand you might not wanna take skills from a beautiful monster right like this, but I've decided to. Now Dread Queen Rathalos actually has a couple skills that are really, really good. And the reason why I've decided to kind of move this over is because she's a fire elemental monster with some really good non-elemental moves in here. Um, but we also have Toxic Sweep. Now, you could choose to replace Arachnophobia with Toxic Sweep as well, because this deals heavy non-elemental damage to all enemies and to inflict Noxious Poison for three turns, which can stack on top or below the Severe Poison that you get here. So you can stack various levels of poison to add more damage over time. So if you want, you could replace the arachnophobia with this noxious gene and the reason why i have a technical power and speed attack on here is because we can always be applying a status ailment and we can counter attack anything that comes towards silver nargakuga now this really depends on how much you want to farm up dread queen rathian but i did decide to go with stacking the venom queen on here because it does a ton of damage and that severe poison does nearly 500 damage per tick and it's insane so before we get into how to utilize this monster in a fight, let's go over some of the armor you can use for yourself. Now, this will vary depending on what you have for charms for your necklace, but there's a couple different things that I really, really like. If you like using a sword and shield, there's one specifically that you can get for killing high rank Rathian. And that is going to be the uh, the Queen's Rapier. I haven't gotten this fully upgraded yet, but it does a ton of damage, especially once you have status ailments. And this also can apply the Noxious Poison, which can stack on top of the other poisons you're applying and then increase your damage and 
your monsties damage. And the armor that you're going to want to pair with this is definitely the Dread Queen armor. This does have that Salt in the Wound ability here, which substantially increases damage done to enemies with abnormal statuses. This is even more damage than what the monster gets from this particular buff. We've also got Critical L in here, which increases your crit rate, and then Inflict Rate up L as well. So if you're running any status ailments on your weapons, then this is going to be an amazing build to pair with this Narga Kuga. Now, if you already have a Salt in the Wound necklace, then you're going to want to use something like the Bloodbath Armor and a non-elemental weapon, because the damage increase from the non-elemental attack boost XL is pretty nuts. So if you can combine non-elemental attack boost XL with salt in the wound whether it's from armor or charms definitely do it now if you're looking for a charm with the salt in the wound xl on it it's actually called hounding xl on your charm so that's what you need to look for so let's go over how to utilize silverwind narga kuga and you can see how much damage it's going to do before you build one for yourself uh, so what I like to do when we start off a fight is use Arachnophobia. It's a very low cost skill and it's going to start increasing our damage right off the bat, especially for your character damage as well if you're starting off with um, Salt in the Wound on your character too. And we're going to try and get as many counters as we can to increase our kinship skill as quick as possible. So there we go. We got Arachnophobia on there, but we did not get a poison. Now, if a monster resists the Arachnophobia, which Grimclaw Tigrex did, uh, go ahead and use Venom Queen, which will apply that severe poison and start our damage over time, which is what we've gone ahead and done here now. And then we can start drastically increasing our damage here, because now we're going to have that dot on there doing about 500 damage per turn. And we've increased both ours and Nargakuga's standard damage because of Salt in the Wound. Now that we have that status ailment on there, we can start trying to lower its defense with Hellbreaker. You can do this before you get the status ailment on there if you want, but I like doing it afterwards because it's kind of just a bonus that we can apply to a monster. Let's see if we can get that defense down. Hellbreaker, 472 damage, no crit unfortunately, and it did not apply the defense down. But we still have that damage over time buff, which is going to help out quite a bit. Yeah, use Rock Slugger, you stupid T-Grex. Oh, you're mad? Too bad you're going to get hit by 404 damage worth of poison. Now, what's great about our Narga Cougar right now is we can basically apply a status ailment any way we can. Now, we have Arachnophobia, and we know that it gets resisted. We can still at least get that technical combo that we need to counter Grimclaw Tigrex when it's enraged and get it to stun. The, gr the best part of this is basically always being able to do double attacks as well, which cancel out your monster, uh, the monster's attack, dealing no damage to you, and hopefully applying some status effects along the way. So it's doing it again. We can literally get it to do Arachnophobia again. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We get another easy stun and a ton of kinship. Now, once we're not getting attacked, then... We're oh, we got that poison applied on there, which is perfect. So now we're going to be doing increased damage from our poison, and we can now stack that with the Venom Queen's poison to deal even more damage. It's just a ridiculous combo, and it's <laughs> it kind of gets out of control, especially when you stack the buffs. So let's see how much damage we're doing now that we've got Venom Queen and the regular poison on there. Oh boy, oh, of course, I go to record, and there's a head-to-head -head instead. There we go. Still taking 404? Okay, so it's 404 damage. So I guess the poison, the, the regular arachnophobia poison doesn't stack with the noxious poison. Uh, but that's fine, because it's it still does quite a bit of damage. And the, the main point is making sure that we get that, uh, that poison up there so we can increase our damage. But there are a few different ways you can increase your damage. Uh, you don't have to go with a tech speed and power ability. You can go with some other damage increasing abilities or defense increasing abilities it's really however you want to do it uh, but i really do hope you all enjoyed this video let me know what you think in the comments below and i'll see you all in the next one